Run, Caleb, run, Harvey shouted. My friends and I had been trying to break into a shop to steal some spray paint when all of a sudden we heard sirens. Someone must have seen us and called the police, Gary said. We ran and ran until we were out of breath. We collapsed near an old dumpster until we could breathe properly, then went to buy some beer. This was the norm for us. My friends were some of the roughest, toughest, meanest people you could ever meet. There was Harvey, who wanted to become a hitman in the future because he said it paid a lot. Then there were Gary and Travis, who wanted to become serial robbers. We came from different backgrounds, though. Their families were all struggling, and this led them to want to pursue a life of crime. I, on the other hand, came from an extremely wealthy family. My parents hated my friends and couldn't understand why I chose to hang out with them. In fact, I'm pretty sure I was the family embarrassment. At 17, I was already drinking, smoking, and involved in a few crimes that I can't mention here. My brother Matthew was one year younger than I was. He was the complete opposite of me. He was respectful, tidy, and had good friends. I think the only bad thing he ever did in his life was turn in a homework assignment one day late. When I wasn't hanging around my friends, I could be found dating the most repulsive types of girls. My parents would be furious whenever I brought them home, and I don't blame them at all. First, there was Sandra, who would smoke in our living room. Then, there was Eliza, who had piercings all over her face and so many tattoos. It was also impossible for her to utter one sentence without swearing. But I think the worst of all was Tiffany. <laughs> she stole things from our house, and we only found out because my dad walked in on her at the right time. She was trying to steal my mom's emerald necklace. My father screamed at her, and she swore at him. It was crazy. Before I continue, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel, or you'll end up dating only psychos for the rest of your life. I'm not kidding. Anyway, my dad had enough when the police brought me home one night for trying to break into a donut shop with my friends. What can I say? We were hungry. He asked me to sit in the living room and gave me a long lecture. Caleb, you were behaving worse than a child who was raised on the streets by wild animals. You are a complete embarrassment to this family, and I'm tired of it, he said. Whatever, I shrugged. I'm not going to live forever, son. As you know, I have a lot of money which my children, you and Matthew, are supposed to inherit after I die, he continued. Yeah, I know that, I said. What I'm trying to say is that if you don't completely change your behavior, I'm going to give your full inheritance to Matthew. I don't feel like you're grateful for all I do, and I don't think you are responsible enough to handle a lot of money. I trust Matthew. I'm proud of him. You? You are a complete disappointment, he said. His words completely shocked me, and I guess it was the reality check I needed to change my life. I had not been taking anything at school seriously and wasn't remotely interested in ever going to college. I needed my dad's money to survive for the rest of my life. I didn't explain this all to him, but I told him I would try to change. I stopped hanging out with my friends and stayed to myself. I'd go out alone and come back home bored. I really missed the thrill I got from my dangerous life, and sometimes I thought I'd go back to it. But then I thought of the money. That was enough. Luckily, or so I thought, I met someone who would change my life and make me happy instead of bored. I met Layla when I went to the movies alone one night. I noticed that she was also by herself. Since I was already so bored and had no one to talk to, I followed her inside and sat next to her. After the movie, we spoke and I asked for her number. She gave it to me and let me walk her home. The next few weeks were beautiful. I took Layla out on exquisite dates and started getting to know her. I met her family when we became comfortable enough for that, and one night, I finally brought her home. She was the first girl my parents ever liked. She was very polite and respectful. She explained to my parents that she had been studying to become a nurse because she loved helping people. Wow, Caleb, you finally brought a real human being home. I was getting tired of these savages you were picking up on the street, my dad laughed one night after she left. Yeah, well, you told me I needed to change, and I listened to you, I replied. Layla started coming over more frequently, and my parents adored almost everything she did. After dinner, she'd always offer to clean up. She always got along very well with Matthew. They were always <laughs> laughing together about something. It was like she blended right in. After a while, my parents started to nag me like they used to in the past. Son, I'm sure Layla doesn't keep her room so untidy. Why don't you clean up? My mom would say. 
Matthew is so much more organized than you are. When last have you taken a shower? You stink, my dad would add. They would nitpick about little, irrelevant things, and I couldn't understand why. I had really made an effort to change. I didn't even drink or smoke anymore, and they were upset because I left some clothes on a chair. I don't mean to sound funny, but my father stopped nagging after he had a heart attack. We were all watching TV together in our living room when suddenly my dad fell onto the floor and grabbed his chest. He's having a heart attack, Layla screamed. We called 911 and they took him to the hospital. When he was released, Layla came over more often to help take care of him. My mom even offered her a bedroom in our house and she started sleeping over. We were grateful for this help since none of us had a background in medicine or nursing. Late one night, after everyone had already gone to bed, I woke up suddenly because I was feeling thirsty. I went to the kitchen to get some water and on my way back, I heard some muffled noises coming from Matthew's room. The door was left slightly ajar, so I pushed it a bit and peeked in. I couldn't believe it. Layla and Matthew were kissing. I was shocked, but mostly angry. How could my own brother do this to me? How could my girlfriend move into my house and cheat on me with my brother? I wanted to hurt them, but I just turned around and went back to my room. I decided that I'd approach each of them privately to see if they'd confess the truth to me. The next morning, I went to Matthew's room, and he was sleeping. I woke him up. Do you think it's weird that my girlfriend lives here now? I asked. Uh, no, why would I? He replied. Well, you've never had a girlfriend, and you've never even had a girl over. Doesn't it make you uncomfortable? I said. He looked confused, then replied, Not at all. Layla's okay. We barely talk anyway. I'm always in my room studying. Is this what you woke me up to ask me? I can't stand you. Please, go away. Then he put his pillow over his head and pretended he had gone back to sleep. Wow, I thought. My brother is a liar, and he's more loyal to some girl than me. I went downstairs and found Layla sitting by herself in the dining room. Good morning, my love. How are you? I said. I'm okay. How are you, my honey bunch? She replied while kissing me on my cheek. I was just wondering, what do you think about Matthew? Does he ever bother you or make you feel uncomfortable? I asked. What? No. Why would you think something like that? Matthew is cool. We don't say much to each other, though. Just good morning and good night, mostly, she replied. She wouldn't admit a thing, either. I waited until everyone was distracted. Then, I placed a small recording device in Matthew's room. It was connected to an app on my phone, so all I had to do was open the app and I could listen to them. Meanwhile, my parents continued to nag me like never before. I couldn't understand why until one night when I opened my app to listen to Matthew and Layla. So, do you think it's working? said Matthew. Yes, your parents adore everything I do, and they're constantly comparing me to Caleb. They think he doesn't deserve me, actually, Layla replied. I keep telling them that Caleb is a waste of time and hinting that they should leave everything to me, too, said Matthew. Great. We just need to put in a little more work so your father realizes how completely useless Caleb is. He's going to die soon and leave everything to you. Then we can finally run away together and be rich forever, Layla laughed. <laughs> Meeting you five years ago was the best thing that ever happened to me. Thank you for making my brother believe that you were into him. This plan would have never worked without you, Matthew continued. What? I thought. They knew each other before? Then, I heard muffled sounds, so I assumed that they started making out again. Disgusting. This was an interesting revelation. The two of them had created a plan to turn my parents against me, so they'd leave everything to Matthew. The most hurtful part was that they were in love even before I met Layla. This was heartbreaking. What about my dad's condition, I thought. Did they have something to do with that, too? I've got to tell my dad, I decided. I ran straight to his room and barged in without knocking on the door. Mom, can I talk to Dad alone, please? It's urgent, I said. Why can't I hear too, she replied. Ugh, fine. Listen, Mom, Dad, Matthew isn't who you think he is. I saw him making out with Layla the other night, so I left a recording device in Matthew's room. I started. Matthew? Kissing a girl? Ha <laughs> ha, I thought he was, my dad joked. Dad, stop. Let me finish. I just found out that they've known each other for years. In fact... I think they're in a relationship and they only used me for their twisted plan. They're trying to turn you against me so that you leave your entire fortune to Matthew. Then, they're going to run off together. They're the ones who've been telling you awful things about me. And that's why you started nagging me so often, I said, almost crying. 
The fact that my dad was smiling the whole time didn't help either. My mom, on the other hand, looked bored. Well, I've got to admit that this whole plan is quite cruel. But Matthew isn't our biological son. We adopted him when he was a baby. And of course, you were too young to remember that. I never intended to leave anything to him at all. I just told you that to scare you, my dad said while continuing to smile. You're our pride and joy, Caleb. We're sorry we've been nagging you so much, but we want you to be more responsible. You were really going down the wrong path, but you're our son and we'll always love you, my mom said. The next day, my dad kicked Matthew and Layla out of the house, but not before I gave them a piece of my mind. Our home has been quiet since then. My parents don't nag too much, and I still haven't returned to my old group of friends. Life is great for now.